<coughs> Hi everybody, it's Webby. Uh, welcome back to a beautiful day here in Melbourne, Australia. Um, we're going to be having a look at the brand new 2022 Ford Everest lineup. I'm going to be showing you around each different model individually, but I just want to start the video off by showing you some of the differences as a sort of a head-on view, if you like, so it's easy for you guys to spot which model is which. So we're going to be having a look at the Trend, the Sport and the Platinum today. Uh, I haven't got the Ambiente here on, unfortunately. Uh, that'll be a separate video later. Um, so as I said, I'm going to grab the camera. I'm going to sort of take you around each different model from the front, uh, and then you can pick out which model is which before we get into the full video of the car. Um, so let me grab the camera and I'll show you around. Right, so let's start off with the trend because that seems an obvious place to start. Now the visual differences on this one to the other models uh, is as you can see just here we've got the chrome bar going across the middle of the front grille. On the lower section this um, bit here is body coloured and then you've got chrome around the fog lights there. So that's one easy way to spot it. Also the trend doesn't have the lettering on the top of the bonnet like the other two models does. When we come to the Sport, as you can see, the front grille is now gloss black. Um, that bar across the middle uh, just there is all gloss black, uh, and also the splitter section just down there along the bottom, uh, and also the fog light surrounds. Um, but then we've also got the word Everest emblazoned across the bonnet in black as well. Uh, it's always black, doesn't matter what color the car is. Uh, then we come to the Platinum, so the obvious cue there is obviously it's got platinum written across the front of the car and uh, so it really gives it away um, but you've also then got uh, sort of the satin cud grill uh, running across the middle of the grill there uh, and then at the bottom you've got the satin finish to the lower section uh, also around the fog light surrounds as well so that's how you spot the three different models uh, of the new everest very very easy uh, to sort of spot the differences between the three models um, so now we're going to get into the main video uh, I'm going to show you uh, all the exterior design uh, of all the different models on the Everest in single videos uh, and then we'll have a look around on the inside uh, and I'll show you all some of the new tech and some of the safety features. Uh, so. Right, so here we are then with the Everest Trend. Um, now this is available as two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. Um, so if you're the sort of person that literally is just going to drive on standard roads, not going to do any sort of off-roading, you can get the two-wheel drive model and we'll be absolutely fine. But if you do want to do a little bit of off-roading, obviously the four-wheel drive model will be better for you. Um, they both use the same two-litre bi-turbo engine. Um, so that's come from the previous model, although it's had a fair few upgrades. Um, so it is a better car to drive this year on the new model. Power is 154 kilowatt and 500 newton meters of torque. Uh, and you've still got the same 10-speed automatic uh, that we had in the previous model, although it has been updated, so it actually does drive a lot better than last year's car. Um, we had a look at the styling cues at the beginning of the video, but just let me remind you. Uh, so we get the C-clamp uh, LED daytime running lamps uh, with the LED headlights um, with automatic high beam. Uh, we've got the chrome grille across the front of the vehicle. Uh, we've got sensors down at the bottom for things like your adaptive cruise control, uh, obviously front sensors there as well. Um, this particular car has got the touring pack on it as well. Uh, so we get the tow bar electric brakes, 360 cameras, um, and zone lighting as well. So you've got the front camera there. Coming around the side, uh, we've got 18 inch alloy wheels. Uh, this one has got the standard road tires on it, uh, but as an optional extra, you can have factory fitted all-terrain tires as well, uh, which is actually quite a nice touch. Um, door mirrors are body colored as are door handles. Side steps are standard as well, which is really nice to see. Uh, and then you've got the badge on the side there just to tell you that this is the bi-turbo engine. Um, this particular colour, by the way, is Meteor Grey. Uh, I happen to think it looks really good in this colour. Um, it's always been a popular colour on Ranger and Everest. Um, yeah, sell heaps and heaps of cars in Meteor Grey. Uh, and as you can see, it looks fantastic. Uh, now looking at the trend from the side, over and above the base model, we do pick up things like privacy glass, which is quite nice. The front windows are clear because that's a legal requirement here in Australia, um, but obviously you can get those tinted as well. Uh, we've got the satin black roof rails, which is quite nice. Uh, keyless entry, push button start, as you'd expect. Um, so it's, for a kind of like not base model, but one up from the bottom, 
you get a really decent level of equipment on this car. Um, and when you add some of the extras you can add on as well, it's really, really good. Um, so if you don't need the V6 from the Sport or the Platinum, the Trend is a really good option for you. Uh, now coming around to the back, as you can see the styling has been really heavily revised from the previous model. You've got this nice clear sort of bar that goes across the middle with the Everest badge sort of hidden behind it. Uh, we've got lovely LED taillights, looks much more modern than the previous model. But it's also much more upright and squarer than the previous design. Um, so it actually gives you much more space inside for passengers, particularly those in the third row. Um, as I said, this one has got the optional touring packs. We've got the factory fitted tow bar here. Um, tailgate is electric as standard. Where on the old model, you used to have like a little handle here with a button inside to open the tailgate. That's actually changed. It's now up here somewhere. There it is. There you go. So yeah, electric tailgate is standard. So seven seats obviously is standard as well on the trend. Um, you've got a little bit of storage here, uh, like we did on the previous model, so nothing's really changed there. To fold the seats down, you've got the little handle, just drop that down. There's actually a decent amount of space in the back of these, even with all seven seats um, you know, upright for, for people to sit in, there's still an actually decent amount um, of space in the back. So you can put a bit of shopping, you can get a suitcase in the back. Um, so even if you're carrying seven people, there's still a little bit of room to put some luggage in. And this is just a little break in the filming and showing you a bit around the boot. I'm actually going to show you the measurements of the boot. I've had a lot of people message me and say, oh, Webby, can you actually put the measurements on the screen of how big the actual boot is? So what I'm going to do is do a few different measurements of with different seats up and down and things like that to show you actually physically how big the boot is. I'm going to show it in measurements, not in litres, because you know, all manufacturers cry, oh, it's got this many litres, but what does it actually mean? So I'm going to measure it with a tape measure to tell you how long and wide and tall and whatever the boot is um, in inches and centimetres and whatever, rather than using litres, because I think that's too bloody confusing. All right, so I've got my trusty tape measure. The first thing I'm going to do is just measure it with all seven seats in place. So you actually get about 15 inches from the back of the third row of seats up until the end of the carpet um, because I think that's probably the most amount of space you'll be able to use once the boot is shut. Um, so that's 15 inches there. And in terms of height, at the very back of the car, we are looking at about 30 inches. So not too bad a space with all seven seats in place. So let's drop the third row of seats down, which is really easy to do in this trend because they're manual. And then we'll do the next one. So we have got, so from the back of the middle row of seats in their most rearward position, you've actually got about 43 inches. So that middle row is as far back as it will go because you know that you can adjust the middle row backwards and forwards. So 43 inches, um, yeah, from the back of the boot to the back of the middle row of uh, seats. Now I'm gonna move the seats forward for the next bit uh, and actually show you the maximum amount of space you can have with five passengers. Um, yeah, so still have five passengers, but obviously maximize your boot space. So I'm just gonna move the seats forward and I'll measure it again. Because this is really handy if you need to put some bigger items in your car. I don't know. Actually, what I've done is been a bit crafty here. I've put one side all the way forward and I've laid the other one flat because then I'll be able to do two measurements in one. Clever thinking, huh? So. If we go to the back of that second row, so that is, that's almost 48 inches. So you get about another five inches roughly by moving that middle row forward um, to gain a bit more space. Now if we go full length and put the middle row seats down, so let's go all the way to the back of the front seat. That's got about 74 inches, that's bloody huge. Um, what, 1.7 meters. So according to that, just over six foot. So if you're six foot in length, you can actually sleep in the back of a Ford Everest, which is pretty cool. Um, 
don't know how often you might need to do that. But anyway, there are the measurements uh, for the length. We've got the height um, and we've got the back there. Let's have a look at the width. So I'm gonna use the measurements here at the back because that's most likely where you're gonna to need to put stuff in the boot. If I take measure plays ball. So we have got, we're looking there. So that's about 44 inches. So it's actually a really usable space in the back of the Everest. Uh, maximum length of about six foot, which is really good. 44 inches between these panels here, because obviously that's your, your biggest sort of boot area. Um, and about 30 inches in height. So it's a really decent amount of space uh, in the back of this new Ford Everest. If you've got any more questions or any more measurements you need, let me know. Um, and I say, I've actually filmed this on a different day, as you can tell, because it's a different coloured car. Uh, and I've got my jacket on because it's not quite as warm today. Uh, anyway, back to the main video. You've actually got tether points for child seats uh, on all five back seats as well. So you can put a child seat in the back seat if you need to. Um, obviously the middle row is better because they've got the isofix uh, mounting points. Um, but yeah, it means you can put plenty of babies or small children uh, in the back of the Everest. Uh, you've got a light back here as well. You've got some little hooks if you want to sort of hold some shopping. We've got a 12 volt socket over there on the left hand side. Um, the air vents, like the previous model, come down from the ceiling. Um, so it means air conditioning in all three rows is nice and easy to operate. Uh, we've got the chrome trend badge there on the left hand side. Uh, this is the four wheel drive model, so we've got the four wheel drive badge on the back of the tailgate as well. Um, but even from the back, I think it's quite a handsome looking car. It's much more modern um, and sort of a bit more edgy than the previous model. So even the trend is quite a good looking sort of chunky um, sort of vehicle. So um, yeah, let's have a wander and look inside the car now because that's the interesting bit. Now before we actually get onto the inside of the interior, this Everest trend, uh, I want you to do me a favour and give the video a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to find out every time a new video goes live. And yes, you can see an Everest Sport and an Everest Platinum there in the background. They're going to be coming soon in separate videos. Uh, so yeah, make sure you're subscribed because then you'll get notified when these videos goes out too. Um, anyway, let's jump inside, have a look around the interior of the Everest trend. Right, so let's jump inside the car. So as I said earlier, keyless entry is standard. Um, I'm actually filming this on my new iPhone 14 Pro. So let me know what you think of the film quality or the picture quality. Um, so there you go. The Trend is actually the first model in the lineup to get leather seats as standard. Uh, they're actually really, really comfortable. Um, they've got more sort of bolstering here on the sides and around the rib cage area uh, than the previous model did last year. Um, they're electrically operated as before. One of the options you can get is a package which gives you memory seats on the driver's side, electric seats on the passenger side, but also the heating and cooling function that is standard on the Everest Sport. And it's not an expensive option. Um, I'm gonna put all the pricing and the options on the screen for you um, for the different models and also the options that you can get on this car. Um, so you can sort of determine which is gonna be best for you and obviously uh, how much it's gonna cost. They're gonna be plus on roads, bear in mind. Uh, so depending on what state you live in in Australia, uh, is exactly how much it's going to end up costing you on road because obviously stamp duty and bits and pieces are different from one state to the other. So anyway, there is the interior. You're probably going to think it looks, looks very, very familiar if you've watched any of my recent videos on the new Ranger uh, because it basically shares the same interior. Um, so let's have a quick look inside. Um, I'm going to jump in and we'll have a look around the dash and also that huge screen on the centre there for the SYNC 4 system. So here we go then, this is a view in front of the driver. Uh, we've got this lovely leather steering wheel. Uh, controls over this side uh, is for things like your adaptive cruise control, uh, volume for your radio and your voice control button there as well. Uh, also your lane keeping aid button there as well. Uh, these buttons on this side uh, operate the digital display in front of the driver. Uh, but then you've also got the buttons there to change your preset radio stations uh, and also answer and end a phone call. Uh, so this display, I have actually done a separate video uh, of this display uh, because the display is the same in the Ranger and the Everest. Uh, I'll put a link up in the top right hand corner of the screen for you so you can go and watch that uh, and get a full rundown of how to operate the digital instrument cluster. Uh, it's actually really, really easy to use, there's plenty of information there uh, it's actually quite an interesting video. Coming to the centre of the uh, con console here. Uh, we've got the 12 inch SYNC 4 entertainment system. Um, so the Ambiente, the base model, is the only one that gets the smaller screen. 
Uh, so the Trend, Sport and Platinum all get the 12 inch sync 4 screen. Uh, and as you can see, it's really, really good. Um, so we've got built-in sat-nav, we've also got wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. Again, there's a separate video that I made on this um, because obviously it takes a bit of time to go through this. Um, there's lots and lots of functions to learn. It is quite easy once you get your head around it. Um, but again, there's that video there to talk you through how to set everything up, how to use all the different features uh, of the screen, uh, how to get things like your wireless Apple CarPlay working. It is still nice to see, we've got some physical buttons down here. Uh, so you can do things like adjust your temperatures uh, for your air conditioning, you can adjust the volume for the radio. Um, so the bits and pieces you'll use fairly often are nice and easy at hand and easy to use. Coming just down there underneath, you can see on the left hand side, you've got the wireless charging mat for your phone, uh, but then you've also got a USB-A and a USB-C charging port as well. Uh, and then also a bit of storage down there as well, which is quite handy. Uh, we get the electronic shifter here in the trend. Um, so as we've seen before, when we had a look at the videos of things like the uh, Range of Wild Track and the Range of Sport, uh, that's the new electronic shifter. Uh, on the side there, you know, you've got the manual mode with the plus and minus to change gears yourself. Uh, we've then got the electronic parking brake. Uh, we've got a couple of cup holders in there as well, which is nice to see. Uh, being this is the four wheel drive model, uh, we've got two high, four high and four low. Uh, but then we've also got four automatic as well. So full time four wheel drive, uh, and then the car will determine uh, where the power needs to go, how much power needs to be split between the front and back wheels. You also twist this dial here as well to change the driving modes. Uh, so there's four driving modes in the trend, um, which you can actually change by, like I say, twisting that button there. And then it actually comes up here on the display. So if I just twist that dial there to the left, so it shows you straight away that I'm in normal mode. And then as I twist it round, we go through things like economy, the tow mode, that's particularly good because now the Everest can actually tow three and a half ton. So when you use that tow mode, the car actually adjusts things like throttle input, uh, steering, it adjusts things like your stability control because it knows that you're towing. And obviously that's a different style of driving than if you're not towing uh, and the car's empty. Uh, so then from the tow in the hall, we then got the slippery mode and then finally we've got mud and ruts. And what you'll notice is between the different driving modes, the car will automatically shift itself between two wheel drive and four wheel drive. And then as you can see on this one, uh, the rear diff lock has also been engaged as well by the little symbol up there at the top of the corner, or the top of the dash, sorry. Uh, and then the four high has also been engaged as well because we're in the mud and ruts mode. So if we come back uh, and we go to slippery, so that keeps um, it in four wheel drive, but it puts it into four drive automatic, but turns off the rear diff lock for you. Um, and then we go up to tow and haul. Uh, again, keeps the car in four wheel drive automatic. And then we come to economy. That will take the vehicle out of four wheel drive because the most efficient way of driving the car is in two wheel drive. Uh, so it puts it back into two wheel drive for you. Uh, and then from the economy, we go back to normal, and now it's telling me I'm getting low on fuel, which I knew anyway before I started filming, uh, which is fine because we're not driving the car today anyway. Um, so that's your drive modes. Uh, then down here, we've got the button where you can turn off your parking sensors, you can turn off your traction control, and then you can also deactivate the stop start system from the engine. The big button down below that is to choose your four, if you press that, there you go. So it brings up the front camera. So if you're going to be going into an off-road situation, this is only on the four-wheel drive model, by the way, uh, because the two-wheel drive model doesn't get this feature. So yeah, on the four-wheel drive model, you press that button, it brings up the camera in front of you, and these tracks here are basically showing you where the car is heading towards. So if you were going into like an off-road situation, it'll be able to show you if there's like, um, I don't know, like a hidden tree stump or if there's a big drop coming up. Um, so you don't get any nasty surprises when you're going off-roading a new Everest, um, which is very, very handy to have, actually. Uh, so that's with the controls and bits and pieces there. We've then got a nice size bit of storage there under the armrest. Excuse my microphone cable. And how does that go back? That goes back there. We've got another 12-volt socket in there, which is quite handy. You can plug in more devices. 
But when you look around the interior of this Everest Trend, it doesn't feel like you're in the model just above the baseline. Um, this leather is really, really nice. As I said, these seats are lovely and supportive. Um, but yeah, just the general sort of layout of the dash. Uh, I've heard some people say the quality of the plastics isn't very good. Um, but I think they're pretty good myself. Um, yeah, I'd be quite happy if I was driving one of these. Uh, we've got two glove boxes. We've got the main one down the bottom there. The like a range of wild track, we get the second one at the top there as well. So you've got two sort of cubby holes where you can put your rubbish. Uh, now in terms of driving position, uh, as I said before, these seats are really, really comfortable. Uh, and you've got a lovely leather uh, steering wheel in front of you. The lever is just there on the left hand side uh, to adjust the steering wheel. Um, and unlike the previous model, we can now adjust it for reach as well as height as well. So you can get that perfect driving position no matter how tall or short you are. Um, so yeah, lovely sort of comfortable driving position. Great view out of the road ahead through the windscreen. Very good view out of the side mirrors as well. Uh, as standard, we've got blind spot monitor on this Everest trend as well. Um, safety um, is as you'd expect in 2022. It's got everything. Uh, you've even got nine airbags. You've got autonomous braking, lane keeping and aid, lane centering, blind spot, rear cross traffic alert. Um, there isn't anything this car hasn't got in terms of safety. And in fact, it's literally just been awarded a five-star rating by NCAP. Um, so it's as safe as possible, um, which is great if you're carrying family, kids, parents, whatever around. Um, it's nice to have that confidence that this car has got you back in terms of safety. A great feature with the blind spot monitor, as you may well know, is when you're towing something, you can actually put the dimensions into the entertainment screen of whatever you're towing. So if you've got your caravan and it's X amount of meters long, you actually put the measurements into the sat-nav screen. And then when you're towing, the blind spot monitor will adjust itself to the distance of the van or the boat or whatever you're towing. So it's a really, really handy feature to have um, because it just gives you a bit more extra safety and confidence when you're driving along the road. Um, so if you're gonna pull out, the car will actually warn you if there's something behind the caravan, uh, which is actually really, really good. Anyway, that's a, a look at the, uh, the front of the car. Now I've set my driving position. Let's jump in the back and see how much space we've got back there. So getting in the back is really, really easy. Um, it's handy having the side steps, uh, but also this handle up here, the grab handle, is actually really handy. Um, great for kids, but also elderly parents as well. Get a nice thud when you shut the door. The windows are a really decent size, so you get plenty of light coming in, but you've also got a really good view ahead, and there's plenty of light. This nice light headlining helps as well. Um, so it's a nice sort of spacious cabin here in the back. As I said earlier, air vents come down from the ceiling. We've also got some lighting here as well. Um, you can actually operate um, the rear air conditioning by a dial just down here uh, at the back of the center console. Uh, and then you've also got a USB-A and a USB-C charging point down there for rear passengers. The rear bench can also slide backwards and forwards. You've got this section which just slides on its own. And then you've also got the larger section there which slides separately. Um, so it's great if you need to extend the amount of leg space for passengers in the back. Um, so it's really, really handy. Uh, you've also got the obligatory fold down centre armrest with cup holders. Um, that's again nice for rear passengers. Um, but also stops kids arguing about how much space each one's got because kids argue, don't they? Um, as I said earlier as well, uh, we've also got the ISOFIX mounting points for your child seats. Um, so you can actually secure them in nice and tightly. Um, so this is just the perfect family vehicle. Say so seven seats, plenty of space, plenty of gadgets to keep everybody happy. Um, so yeah, I've got absolutely acres of space. Decent amount of headroom too. Now I can pull my seat forward a little bit because what I want to show you is how much space we've got in the back of the car. All right, so now we're in the back in the third row of the Everest. Um, it's not too bad actually. I've got plenty of knee room. Uh, I have moved the seat forward slightly in the middle. Room to put my feet is a little bit restrictive uh, because obviously where the seats are. So you wouldn't want to be sat here for a long time. We do get a cup holder on this side, plus also on the other side. Uh, and on the left side of the car is also a 12 volt power socket as well. Uh, it's a shame there isn't a, a USB either side. That would be quite handy for rear passengers. Um, but I suppose because these are occasional seats, you're not gonna have people sat back here all the time. 
Uh, so maybe Ford thought, well, you know, it's not that important to have a USB in the third row uh, because it's just occasional seats. Uh, you do get the air vents overhead uh, for the third row as well, which is quite nice. Uh, so the air conditioning does get back here rather than being all hot and claustrophobic. Uh, so that's a really good consideration. Uh, but as occasional seats are absolutely fine. Um, my head is fairly close to the ceiling. I'm only five foot six. Um, so small adults like me or kids would be absolutely fine back here. Now, as with every other Ford, as with every other new Ford car, uh, the new Everest gets a five-year unlimited mileage warranty. Uh, and there's also cap price servicing for the first four years, uh, so four years or 60,000 Ks uh, cap price servicing, which is 329 per service. Um, that's for retail and Blue Fleet customers only. Uh, so small sort of businesses and individual persons uh, get the cap price servicing. So that's a quick rundown of the Everest trend. Uh, as I said in the video, we are going to be taking the car out for a drive once this thing's been through the workshop and is on the road. Uh, so watch out for that video there. If you've got any questions or comments about the trend in particular, leave them down in the comments section for me and I'll answer any questions as soon as I can for you. If you have liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe because then you'll get to see the other Everest videos that are coming soon as well. Um, Make sure you hit the notification bell because that will actually tell you when the video comes out and then you'll get all the up-to-date information on the new Everest lineup. So that just leaves me to say thank you very much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something about the new Ford Everest trend. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.